The Owen. There we go. Yeah, that there he is. That is the winner for the Republicans, Bob Stefanowski, uh, walking into the Madison Beach Hotel. Let's listen in. So I think it's fair to say this campaign's been underestimated from the start. <laughs> I don't think anybody really thought we'd be standing up here right now uh, yes, winning this. We did. But we proved them wrong, and we're going to prove them wrong when we beat Ned Lamont in November. Yes. I got a bunch of people to thank. Uh, first of all and foremost, my wife Amy, my beautiful wife. She's been incredibly supportive. She's got a terrific uh, personality. Yes. Uh, she's got an endearing heart, and I love her to death. Thank you, Amy. I also want to thank my daughters, Lauren, Rachel, and Megan. Running for office is about ten times harder, I think, than any of us imagined, but uh, <laughs> their maturity um, and, and gentleness in the face of attack ads, scrutiny by the press, late nights, and at times a distracted and grouchy dad. I, I love you girls. <laughs> I want to thank my campaign team and the dozens of volunteers for the crazy nights, the crazy weekends. We absolutely could not have done it without your help. And I want to uh, thank a group of tough, competitive uh, people that I was up against. Mark Bouton, Tim Herbst, Steve Upsitnik, and David Stemmerman. Um, terrific guys, fought really, really hard. Um, I look forward to reaching out to them over the next couple of days and getting their views on how we beat the Democrats this fall. Yeah. I especially want to thank the Republican voters and those who gave me their confidence today. It's amazing to have that bunch of support. Um, and I want to thank those who voted for another candidate uh, but took the time to get out and vote. I look forward to working with everyone, everyone in the Republican Party, getting unity around this goal, the common goal to win the governor seat for Republicans this fall. And finally, I want to... Finally, I want to thank my dad. I'm not sure. <laughs> my dad's 88 years old. He still lives in the house. My dad's 88. Uh, he still is in the house I grew up in in North Haven. He's been there for 50 years. Um, my family is an example of what Connecticut used to offer. Um, after graduating from Hill House High in New Haven in 1948 as a basketball star, uh, my dad married my mom. They were together for 70 years till she passed away about a year ago. 
Um, they worked incredibly hard. Uh, they created a safe and happy home for my family, my three sisters and I. They sent us all to college. This is what Connecticut should be about. Being able to do it. Thank you for your integrity, your hard work, and your guidance. Thank you. And I promise this speech won't go on for hours. Take your time. Realistic. You know, when I first started talking about running for office, I met with a lot of people. Um, I got a lot of insights, a knowledge into the process of politics and government, um, but quite honestly, nothing can prepare you for what your family and your friends go through in one of these processes. Um, but I've learned a ton. Um, I've learned that despite pressure from people on the internet, the attack ads, and everyone who wants to put their spin on what you're doing, you have to stick to your core beliefs and your core values, and that's exactly what you're doing. I learned that to save our state, we have to defend core Republican values of smaller government with less interference in our lives, lower taxes, greater personal responsibility, and the highest moral and ethical standards possible. I learned a ton about this great state and its people the diversity of our 169 towns and cities, Connecticut's rich history and legacy, and our people's sincere hope to bring Connecticut back to the greatness that it used to have, and that's exactly what we're going to do as governor. I learned that eight years of Dan Malloy and the special interests that he's beholden to have damaged our unalienable right to the pursuit of happiness in this state. I learned, I learned that we can't continue to kick the can down the road. We need to wipe the slate clean with a fresh approach, ambitious goals, and the tenacity to achieve those goals. Our great state simply cannot afford a continuation of Dan Malloy's horrible economic policy with Ned Lamont. No I have a plan, I have a focus, and I have a message that will put Connecticut's working families first, not the special interests in Hartford. Those days are over. I've got a plan to reduce taxes and eliminate the state income tax hey. over eight years. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a plan to reduce waste in Hartford, reprioritize how government is run, and yes, bring some common sense business practices back to how we run this state. For the first time in decades, Connecticut will actually have a real CEO whose primary focus will be putting people back to work and creating a competitive environment where working families can afford to stay here and our parents and grandparents can afford to retire here. Mr. Markley, is he here? Did he make it here? Joe Markley? On He's on his way. Well, I want to congratulate Joe Markley. We're going to make a heck of a team up in yeah. there.
Joe's knowledge of government and ability to work with the legislature will be invaluable to moving our growth agenda forward in this state. Someday, Joe, I, and all of us here are going to look back on this very night with pride as we finally begin the process to restore Connecticut to its former glory.